I want you to imagine what it would be like to have a perfect memory. Super useful, right? And it might even seem like a superpower. Think about it. Every day we observe and then quickly forget millions and millions of things, simply because we're not capable of remembering that much. But if we could remember every tiny piece of an observation that we make, our understanding of the world would increase exponentially. Even if you were able to remember only the smallest details about someone, you would have perfect recollection of all the tiniest things that go unnoticed that make up the largest parts of their personality. With enough of this information, you can take a simple step and paint a near-perfect image of who they are and what they're like. You can see their fears, their habits, their desires, even their likely future actions. And all this can theoretically be achieved just through observation and remembering. Now, what if I told you this was possible? We've all heard the phrase, big data being thrown around, often without a real concept of what this buzzword means. But the image we just painted is essentially what it is. The ability to draw conclusions from a dense mass of information. And this is possible because for the first time in human history, our computing powers have reached a critical point where everything can be stored and reobserved. The surge in the last few years of accurate available data and extreme progress in our computing capabilities has allowed us to begin extracting and exploiting patterns in our data that were too large or too small for us to notice in the past. Simply put, we now have a system where everything and anything can be archived and analyzed. Armed with the power of this information, we can begin solving problems that we've never been able to solve before. For a small taste of its potential, we can look to see how data science has revolutionized the field of conservation. Right now, it is possible to talk to a chatbot in a dying indigenous language. This chatbot, Opie, is actually a small, easily transportable robot that was made possible through researchers in Australia partnering with Google. Under the hood, the researchers utilize common data science techniques to transcribe tens of thousands of hours of language recordings to train the chatbot's AI, effectively preserving the language for future generations. A current project at the Smithsonian, which I've had the privilege of working on, uses data science to collect and convey information on the destruction of cultural heritage sites. Right now, the data collection relies on the laborious efforts of contributors reading thousands of primary source text in an array of different languages. But automation of this process has been envisioned. Natural language processing, teaching the computer to read text, would allow for crucial pieces of information, such as the name of the site in the local language, the exact location where the site stood, and who destroyed it, to be cataloged automatically. This data is then used to visualize the exact location of where the site was, letting future generations know what was lost, preserving some aspect of what once was, as well as providing a treasure trove of data that can be used to predict what's in the line of fire next. This allows for more proactive instead of reactive measures and gives politicians a nice little picture to look at so they can finally understand the weight of the situation and act before these sites are destroyed. And yet, the most likely scenario is that you've never heard of any of this research. Despite initiatives like Rockefeller's Data Science for Social Impact, MasterCard Center for Inclusive Growth, and the works of DataKind, an organization that pairs data scientists to nonprofits, this type of actionable data science has never received a spotlight and has not gained traction. This is in part because the tools needed to make initiatives like these succeed are kept under lock and key for the purpose of confidentiality and profitability, which is why data breaches and the misuse of our personal information it's probably a more familiar concept than data-driven breakthroughs, as we hear time and time again of companies mishandling our personal information or blatantly selling users' data in questionable business-to-business -business deals. So where is the accountability when our personal information is mismanaged or annoyingly passed off to other companies? In various other fields, we see a level of accountability that is wholly lacking in data science. In the field of engineering, the iron ring worn by Canadian engineers symbolizes the commitment to the ethical obligations they promised upon graduation and serves to remind the disasters that take place when these ethics are disregarded and corners are cut. And the Declaration of Geneva is a familiar concept in the medical field and is the oath that is usually summarized as do no harm. 
This commitment serves a crucial role in establishing the guidelines for the ethical treatment of patients, which is radically different from the barbaric practices that used to plague the field. So, now is also a time when a call for accountability matters the most. Because as profits march on, and data gradually becomes the new oil, we're becoming the new wells. Some players in the data market are data brokers, those whose sole goal is to collect as much information on a person and sell it off, regardless of who's asking for it. And as it turns out, our data is an extremely lucrative industry. In this room alone, there's 1.7 megabytes of data created per person per second. And that data sells around for 20 to 40 cents depending on how profitable your demographics are. In my previous work, I've seen exactly how this data was collected and how it was sold. I've seen data sets with tens of thousands of points of information on every person, which was then auctioned off to boost corporate profits. Data that was trusted to be handled by someone who doesn't even yet have a college degree. Even Google and Facebook have constructed a 360 view of everything you searched and liked, everywhere you've been, and everyone you interact with. And if you're curious, you can see for yourself what data they have on you. On Google, you can request to download your archive, which for me was 12.18 gigabytes, roughly the equivalent of one million Word document pages, certainly more than any autobiography you've read, I imagine. As for Facebook, you can download hundreds of folders detailing every post, every message, and every location check-in. My personal archive was a little over 17,000 Word document pages. As of now, the status quo is a focus on profitability with little regard for the people whose data is tossed around between companies and marketers. People's own information is used against them, and corners are often cut in cybersecurity, leading to data breaches that could have easily been prevented. But do we have to accept this fate? Even though I've used the term data to refer to the assets of these companies' marketers, you can easily go back and replace data with personhood. It is not just simple demographic details that's handled, but the construct of your nearly complete personality being sold on the online market. As mentioned before, your likes, political views, favorite movies and books, and all of your photos are at stake when companies choose to profit off of it. And this, oddly enough, looks like something we've conquered before, a grim repeat of human history in another form. Just as the medical field took centuries of human experimentation, degradation, and exploitation before guidelines were set, we can choose to instill those rules now, before we become digitally lobotomized. This is then a call to action for Hippocratic Oath, AKA, do no harm for data scientists and those that handle our most personal information, similar to the Declaration of Geneva, the formal name for the Hippocratic Oath, and the guideline that defines the ethics of the medical field. And why would this model potentially work? Well, the most familiar concept of do no harm already provides a substantial new guideline. Certainly reaping our data and selling it unknowingly is worthy of being categorized as harmful. Although we don't feel the damage on the physical level, the hits come to our emotional state as our sense of privacy is lost and control over our own data is commandeered. The first section of the Declaration of Geneva asks for a pledge of dedication to the service of humanity. A call to view of the larger picture can direct data scientists to focus on projects that help to construct an exit plan from issues we've grappled with for centuries. And we've seen examples of companies doing this. Google helping to preserve indigenous languages, and IBM using their extensive computing capabilities to propel the medical field. In another section, the promise to respect the autonomy and dignity of the patient is made. This is a far cry from the amorphous grouping of data points we appear to be to those that handle our information. Rather, let us be treated for the individuals that we are, with care taken to not use our information against us, much like the offense brought against Facebook by the US Department of Housing and Urban Development in 2018, when Facebook restricted certain users from viewing housing ads on the basis of race, sex, and disability. In another section, the promise to share their knowledge for the benefit of the person and advancement of the field is made. Simply put, 
Proprietary impedes progress where we need it most. And finally, they will not use their skills to violate human rights and civil liberties. We will not accept falling victim to having our information used against us. We will not let the data of the oppressed be further used to censor. Of course, this isn't a demand that everyone in the field flock to nonprofits and solely work for charities. Of course, profits will still need to be made. And of course, companies with not so perfect track records will continue to thrive. This is instead an ask for conscientious computing and damage-free data science. Naturally, the issue starts at the top, only to trickle down to those with the technical skills to execute it. So, what can we do? Well, it's good to know that the European Union already has a head start on tackling this issue after passing the General Data Protection Regulation Law. This law limits the unnecessary collection data and demands full transparency from those that attempt to collect it. Still, the push for greater privacy and data security needs to happen at the policy level in the states where these companies are based. This includes pressing lawmakers to understand the severity of damage that can occur and to hold companies accountable when misuse occurs. At the corporate level, we ask that our data only be handled by those that can recognize the weight of the situation and encourage data scientists to propose projects with more impactful end goals. At the end of this chain, data scientists bear the responsibility of speaking up when data abuse is occurring and to remain mindful of the work that they do. As an upcoming data scientist, I pledge these promises now, and I encourage you to demand these declarations from your data handlers before more data is reaped and more damage is inflicted. Thanks for coming to my TEDx talk.